Hello, it's Nina with Stitching with a Smile and I'm here to start the Hardanger Stitch Along or Hardanger Along, HAL, H-A-L. I've picked a pattern from the Nordic Needle website and this is the pattern. It's called Ivory Octagonal Doily and I'll put the link below on how to find that pattern. The finished size is about 10 by 10 if you use a 22 count fabric. Um, but I'm going to uh, walk you through some steps if you want to choose a different uh, size fabric. The pattern itself, they don't tell you how many threads it is from side to side or top to bottom. So I've counted up the threads. <clears throat> it's a square piece, so the threads are 228 by 228. I might be out a couple of threads, but that's not going to uh, make a big difference. So if you're going to use a 22 count fabric, you take that 228 divided by 22 equals a little over 10 or just under 10 and a half inch square. And that'll be, because it's square, it'll be both directions. If you want to use a 25 count fabric, you take the 228, divide it by 25, and your finished piece will be a little over 9 inches square. So that gives you an idea. A 25 count Lugana is really nice to stitch on, uh, but if you're new and still not sure, I would suggest a 22 count. Of course, both, both will be beautiful in the end. When I do my hardanger stitching, um, uh, I do prefer to have a lot of extra all around the piece, um, just to be on the safe side if I've made a mistake somehow, etc. I probably don't need as much as I'm going to tell you. Uh, you choose for yourself what you need to do. So I'm going to be using a 22 count hardanger fabric. The finished piece will be 10.4 or thereabouts. If I add 3 inches on all sides, so that's 10.4 plus 3 plus 3, so it's actually plus 6, I need a square that's 16.4 inches. So I am going to cut my fabric um, between 16 and 17 inches. And again, that's, that's my preference. I like to have lots of extra. Um, you definitely uh, do, do what you, you feel comfortable doing. Um, now the pattern itself is here. As I said, this is a free pattern from Nordic Needle, so I can show it on, uh, on YouTube. And you can see that's the whole whole pattern. Now what they do is they only give you, uh, and I, I apologize, I have this up on a, um, a stand so that you can see it up close, but I will uh, later on remove the stand and I'll uh, show you the whole thing. Um, Nordic Needle, well and most patterns, will give you just a quarter of the uh, of the pattern because the whole thing is repetitive so you only really need a quarter to to follow and if you notice down here it says each square of this chart represents two by two threads of fabric so if you look let me grab scissors if you look at this this is actually two squares but each square represents two threads. So you're actually going to be going over four threads here. So just to give you uh, an idea of how this looks. But each time we stitch on the stitch along, I will walk you through all the steps so that you can uh, do that. 
Um, and for instance, this last line on here is two threads because it's just going over one section of the square. The center of the fabric is right here, or the center of the pattern, I should say, is right here. Um, let me just think if there's anything else I need to tell you. They show you here, uh, the A section is the woven bars, picots, and webs. So that would be in here is where we will do our cutting and do our woven bars, etc. And up here, we will cut between here. But again, uh, I will walk you through all those steps, so don't be worried about it. Um, <laughs> I think for the moment that's all I need to say about the pattern, except that I will have the link down below. Uh, when you go to the link, I, the link, I should say, I believe you need to uh, scroll down and find this pattern. Uh, but again, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it in the uh, link down below, and the pattern itself is called Ivory Octagonal Doily. And let me uh, get rid of my stand here, just one second. And there you go. That's the full pattern. Okay, we'll see you for the next segment. Hello, I've chosen my fabric. Uh, I've chosen a 22 count Hardanger fabric and mainly because I want to be able to uh, have you see, well mainly, I also like 22 count but I do like the 25 as well. Uh, I like to uh, make sure that you can see what it is I'm doing and I think the 22 will help with that. And just to give you a little idea of what I do here, I uh, roll my fabric and then I have a piece of um, cardstock that I tape to hold the roll together and I write what the fabric is, the size of the piece. I've actually cut my piece uh, so I had to adjust the size. Um, the thread that it matches I've written down here as well. So this Ecru fabric matches Ecru DMC or uh, 712. And the, um, the threads I picked for our project are a watercolor by Caron. I hope you can see that. And the color I picked in this case was Peach Sherbert 013. Uh, a couple of notes about the Caron watercolors. Uh, first of all, it's a three-ply so you only use one ply. So when we cut the piece that we need, the say 18 inches or whatever it is you're going to be using, you divide, you take that thread and you divide it into three. Take those plies apart and just use one ply for, um, for that. The second thing is make sure when you purchase it to get uh, the same die lot uh, because the die lots uh, vary greatly. Uh, so be very careful about that. Make sure you get enough or more than enough of thread that you need. Um, if you have extra thread you can always make cards with uh, extra pieces of material. And for the uh, needle weaving, dove's eyes, etc., I've chosen a number 8 pearl cotton um, in just the ecru. So we're good there. Uh, you can for size 22 Hardanger fabric or size 25 uh, Lugana, you can use the number 5 pearl cotton for cloister blocks, etc. And the number 8, of course, for the uh, needle weaving. You can use uh, for the cloister blocks the um, watercolors by Caron. And there's also uh, I haven't used it yet, but I did pick up some, so I'm going to give that a try. Uh, a thread called Valdani. And uh, they come also in a number 5 pearl cotton and a number 8 pearl cotton. And uh, the woman that I was speaking to at the store who was uh, that I was buying it from said to me that um, 
uh, a lot of people like that number five pearl cotton Valdani to use on a 25 count Lugana or 25 count uh, even weave when they do Hardanger. It's uh, it's actually much nicer or well not much nicer. The Karen is nice. It's um, the size is is a better size for the 25 count. This might be a little bit thick for the 25 count. I, I have done it, um, but I think the Valdani might be better that way. At any rate, just to give you some ideas of what you can use, again, do what you want to do. Uh, it is your stitching. You can do whatever you like. But I just wanted to help you with some choices. We'll see you in a bit. Hello, we're back with the fabric. I've zigzagged the edge the edge all the way around. This edge you don't need to zigzag because it's already uh, secure, but I've zigzagged the edge all the way around with my sewing machine. However you want to do it, you go ahead and secure your edges. Then what we need to do is find the center of our fabric by folding in half and folding in half again and pressing with our fingers for the center so that we have our, our center. Then what you want to do is take a piece of thread. Now I just use sewing thread for this and I cut it a lot longer, quite a bit longer than the piece. And the order in which I stitch is from the center to one side and then the center to another side 90 degrees with a separate piece of thread. So one piece of thread will go one way, another piece of thread will go the other way, um, but I start at the center, go one way, and then I go from the center one way, and then I can finish off the others with the threads that are in there. We'll do it together so that hopefully uh, I can explain it. From the center, I'm just sitting down here, from the center you want to go, there's the center, you want to go over two threads and sink your needle and then you go under and over and under and over four threads. So I've gone over two threads, I'm hoping you can see that, and I've gone under four, over four, so it doesn't look, one, two, three, four, yeah, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to continue, so. So once I get near the end, uh, with about an inch or so to go, I just go over under two and kind of back stitch just to secure it. How, oops, however you want to uh, secure it, go ahead and secure it. Uh, that part will be cut off anyway, so it's no big deal. You can knot it, you can back stitch it, do whatever you like. Okay, close enough. All right. So now if you can see, I'll stand up and look in the camera again, if you can see, hopefully you can. We've got just a quarter of it done. Next we're going to take a new piece of thread, again a lot longer than, quite a bit longer than our uh, length of our piece, and we're going to start in the middle and go up. Where's the thread? There it is. Okay. Here. Okay, and turn this. So now that we have our center quite well marked because we have that first thread in there, that's the center. My needle is in the center. I'm going to count, so I've done it this way. I'm going to count up. Hang on, where's the center now? There, one, two, over two, and again over four, under four.
All right, so I'll use the needle to point. I was going to put it away. All right, so now where are we here? Okay, I've gone to the end and just backtracked a few times, and that'll secure it. I'll cut this thread uh, in a moment. Now we have the last two sides to do. So I would go up with the one thread the same way and over with the one thread. So in the end what we have in the middle are oh, the sunshine is not helping here. Uh, oh, because the sun is on top of my camera, that's why. Um, where's our middle? Here. Let's see if I can do this in the sun. Um, we'll have a cross in the middle of the threads and that'll show the exact center. So it'll be over four and over four. On both sides. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to leave you to, uh, if you wanted to follow along, to prepare your fabric. Um, and I'll give you some time to even try to get your fabric uh, together, etc. And we'll get to the next one. Now that the videos are, once, once they're up, they will be up always. So whenever you want to do it, you're more than welcome to do it. You certainly do not have to follow along right away. Um, or even if you don't want to follow along and just use it as a reference, um, it'll be good for that as well. I think if there's anything else that I've forgotten, I'll tack it on to the end in written script. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you at the next installment. Bye-bye.